Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, most compassionate, ever merciful. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening. And I greet you with the Islamic greeting. If you know the reply, please do reply. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. What did that mean? It meant peace be with you. That's the greeting of Islam. Just first, a quick analysis of the two panels here. We have the proposition, um, and I'm a part of that. We have two individuals here that have actually studied Islam, who have studied Arabic morphology, Arabic grammar, principles of exegesis, hadith sciences, principles of Islamic jurisprudence, and other subjects that are required in order for one to understand the text of the Quran and the hadith, the two primary sources of Islamic teachings. We, at the same time, both of us, have taught Islam in academia, and myself, I have been teaching Islam for the past 12 years within various different religious circles. On the other hand, you have a panel that consists of those that haven't really studied Islam, that are unfamiliar with various different subjects that are required for one to understand the text of the Quran in the Hadith. So they don't have the expertise to analyze or critically access Islamic resources. They say in academia, check your sources. So it depends on you, it depends on you who will you listen to. Those that actually have studied the religion or those who have partial understanding of the religion. The other point I'd like to make is a very shocking point, but however it's a sad reality, that the members of the proposition have something in common with ISIS. Have something in common with Al-Qaeda have something in common with Boko Haram and all other militant organizations. And that is that they both share the same understanding of Islam. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Their understanding of the text of the Quran is exactly the same. There is absolutely no difference. They believe, for example, that one, as I've just heard, that women, men, you can beat Quran says you can beat women. Nowhere in the Quran does it say that. There is a verse in the Quran that the, where the word Daraba has been used. However, none of the classical scholars have understood it or interpreted it as beating your wife. So that's one thing. Uh, but then, again, there is another thing that both believe in the clash of civilizations. Both desperately cherry pick information from the Quran in the Hadith and frame it to be in agreement with their bigotry. With all due respect, for several years, the media has focused our attention on the phenomenon of religious motivated terrorism. Our television screens have been filled with atrocities committed by ISIS, etc. However, these news reports, the very image of the perpetrator in these news reports has been wedded to phrases like Muslim extremism and Islamic extremism. However, looking behind these media-driven cliches, when we look at the academic, uh, academic reports that have been conducted on terrorism, on various different kind of attacks that have been uh, taken place, they all conclude that more than 90% of these attacks attacks are directed at an occupying force. So the motivation behind more than 90% of these terrorist attacks, it's not religious at all. It is actually political uh, motivations. I do acknowledge that there is a very small minority, 10% according to these various different researches, that there are people out there that have committed violence in the name of Islam. And I'm hereby referring to, for example, the attack on Charlie Hebdo. But however, we have to understand that that is based on the perversion of Islam. I assert that Islam for most people that practice their faith is a source of good. The Prophet Muhammad, for example, when asked, how do you define a Muslim? He said, Al -Muslimu man nasa min wa yadihi. A Muslim is the one whose hand and tongue are a source of peace for other people. When asked what is the best action in Islam, he replied by saying, that the best action in Islam is to feed the poor people, the hungry people, and to spread peace. This is the Islam that the majority of the Muslims understand. This is the Islam, the understanding that the Muslims have, and those have, that actually have studied Islam comprehensively, have studied the context of the verses, have studied the context of the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad, and do not take things out of context. So in short, you can certainly point out to examples where people have used Islam 
or other religions to do things that are terrible. But I ask you not to judge all Muslims or even judge the Islamic text by these people anymore. Then you would judge politics by bad politicians, journalists by bad journalists, or lecturers by, by bad lecturers. I have been in Ireland for 11 years. I've met many various different Christian friends. I've made Christian friends. And of course, like many people, I have also been saddened by the abuse of, that took place in the church. But would it be really reasonable for me to judge Christianity based on the actions of few, based on the actions of those that were involved in the abuse in the church? Or should I actually, at the same time, not ignore those Christians that have actually, the majority of the Christian people, that understand their faith and practice their faith in a very peaceful way? Similarly, in the name of creating the version of a religion-free utopia, Adolf Hitler, Joseph Stalin, and Mao Zedong produced the kind of mass slaughter that no jihadi could possibly match. Collectively, these atheist tyrants have murdered more than 100 million people. Among Muslims, yes, there are extremists. Also, that in the name of Islam persecute Christians. Taliban, in the name of Islam, demolished Buddha Asian structures. But would it be fair to only cherry pick these incidents and ignore the fact that the same Buddha structures survived 13 centuries of Muslim rulership? Would it be fair to, to, to ignore the fact that, that Christians and Jews have been living in peace in various different countries, in Iraq, in Egypt, in Morocco, in Palestine, under Muslim rulership for 1400 years? So would it be, at the same time, this university is currently is making in, in, in a different way headlines, sensational news. A group of male students shared pictures of female students. So would it be fair to accuse all male students in the university of this sick activity? So would it be reasonable to say that the university has provided this platform and therefore we should blame the university for this revenge porn? Of course not. Lastly, I would like to highlight the problem of Islamophobia, anti-Muslim sentiments that are increasing because of the disproportionate media reporting in regards to terrorism, in regards to extremism. We see, if you really genuinely want to prevent radicalization of the 10%, those people, extreme minority within the Muslim community, if you want to genuinely prevent that happening, we should stop creating a climate of hysteria and drop the def defensive, reductionist rhetoric. We should be constructive in our, uh, in our discussions. We should try to understand, rather than stereotype, rather than generalize the whole Muslim community or the Islamic teachings, and, may, and saying that it is Islam that has created the problem. We should be very fair and honest, and we should say it's not religion, it's not Islam. It is the misinterpretation of Islam that is actually the problem. And as a Muslim a a scholar, I am facing, I am actually working on that. Those those of you that know, I have organized last year the anti-ISIS protest. I have been very, very loud against radicalization, extremism in this country. So if we genuinely are trying to solve the problem of extremism and radicalism, and if we don't want to stereotype and generalize the whole community, then I would say we should have a construct constructive dialogue. So ladies and gentlemen, if you vote that Islam is a religion of violence, what you're doing is you're alienating a whole Muslim community and a religion because of the wrong pers because of your own perception and because of your misunderstanding and not because of the reality so i ask you tonight ladies and gentlemen to vote against the motion and show that you will not fall into the trap of those who tar all with the same brush and have a very simplistic understanding of the teachings of islam thank you very much